Today we are going to talk about a topic called z-scores. Z-scores are used to allow us to compare results from different normally distributed sets of data. So what we have here in paragraph 1 says that normal distributions with different means and standard deviations can still be compared if we think of mu as the center and sigma as a unit of measurement. So what we do is we standardize these units and create what is called a z-score. And the z-score allows us to give all normal distributions the same scale. All right, so here's our formula that we'll need to figure out a z-score. If x is some score from a normal distribution with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, then the z-score is found by doing x minus mu divided by sigma. So basically, I'm going to do the score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. What this does is it tells me how many standard deviations I am from the center of data. And that's very useful because if I told you, for example, that somebody scored a 75%, you might think, huh, well, they got a C. Well, then if I told you that the average was a 50, well, then that 75% is much more impressive than someone telling you they scored a 75% on a test where everybody in the class earned an 80% or better. So the z-score helps put your, your score in context by comparing it to the mean and the standard deviation for the data set. Scores that are higher than the mean have a positive z-score, and scores that are lower than the mean have a negative z-score. And that's because of the numerator of our z-score where we are subtracting score minus the mean. All right, if we look at our second or our first example here, it says that the heights of young women are approximately normal. Again, this tells us that we can use the standard deviation rules we talked about yesterday with the percentages and so on. So they're approximately normal with a mu of 64 inches and a sigma of 2.5. All right, we want to find the z-score for a woman who is 61 inches tall. So this is like her x value. So I can say that z is equal to her score minus the average divided by 2.5. Now since her uh, height is smaller than the average, we should expect this to be a negative value. And we get a negative 1.2. And what this means is that her height is 1.2 standard deviations below the mean. Now even though we may not know a whole lot, we at least know if it's more than one standard deviation below the mean, if we think about our curve, we know that's a bad curve, but we know that 34% lie within one standard deviation. So we know that she's at least somewhere in this range, we know that she's at least in the bottom 16% in terms of height. So it puts our score into context. Next, we have a woman who is 70 inches tall. We want to know how many standard deviations she is from the mean. So in this case, I am also asking you to find the z-score. I just asked for it in different terms. So I would do 70 minus 64 divided by 2.5, and I get 2.4. So she is 2.4 standard deviations above the mean. And we know that that means she's in that top, top, top 0.15% of the population for height. In example two, we have Caesar taking the GRE, and he scores a 630 on verbal and a 700 on quantitative. We want to know does it, which one did he do better on, because it's hard to compare these scores. You know, numerically, 700 sounds better than 630. However, without knowing the average and the standard deviation, we don't really know which one's better. Now, we know that the mean for verbal is 7, 6, or 469 with a standard deviation of 119, and the mean for quantitative is 591 with a standard deviation of 148. So we're going to find the z-score for each section. For his verbal section, he had 630 minus 469 divided by 119. And for his quantitative, he has 700 minus 591 divided by 148. Now when we figure out these calculations, we get 1.353 for verbal and 0 0.736 for quantitative. So what this tells me is that he did much better on his verbal section. 
Compared to his peers, he scored 1.3 standard deviations above the average. And again, when we think about those percentages, 34% are here, 13.5 are here. So he definitely scored you know, greater than the 84th percentile, whereas on quantitative, he didn't even break that 84th percentile barrier. Okay, so this is where z-scores are very helpful. They help us compare things when they're not really comparable otherwise. All right, in example three, we have um, to be accepted into Hogwarts School of Magicking, which sounds awesome, by the way. Um, students need to score at least 1.5 standard deviations above the mean on the wizardry skills test. If the mean score is 200 and the standard deviation is 26, what are the minimum score necessary to be accepted? All right, so we have to score at least a 1.5. So my score minus the mean divided by standard deviation needs to be greater than or equal to 1.5. Now, solving this inequality, I cross multiply and add 200. I get that x is greater than or equal to 239. And so that represents the minimum score that I must get in order to be accepted into this fantastically awesome school of magicking. Go ahead and pause the video and try examples 4 and 5 on your own. Then unpause the screen and listen to the explanations and see how you did. All right, in example 4, we know that this is definitely wrong because if a score is greater than the mean, it would have to have a positive z-score. So when we look at example 4 and it says that the z-score was negative 2 and the raw score was greater than the mean, we know that that is incorrect. In example 4, we have a teacher who gave the statistics, but nobody could remember which one was the standard deviation. So if you scored above the mean, then you would want the standard deviation to be smaller because then your z-score would be 1. So in this case, I would have scored 1 a standard deviation above the mean, which sounds more impressive. For your friend who scored below the mean, they would want the standard deviation to be larger because then they would have performed only 0.25 below the mean as opposed to the other one where they performed 0.5 below the mean. All right, homework is to complete Worksheet 11. Have a great day.